Um, uh oh, I have a few questions. I first had a comment. It's, it's, um, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if it's good to see a lot of people here. I would encourage people who do want to learn more um, about what's going on to go to some, I shouldn't say more, maybe thoughtful or intelligent dialogues, but differently thoughtful and intelligent, and they're going on all the time around the Twin Cities, and it would be great to see people there and participating. Um, and um, yeah. I, I'm going to try to read out what has been said. Um, I, I, I also, I'm, I'm not a rabbi, although I thank God that women can be rabbis now, so I'm not going to quote the Bible, but it seems that to be a, what, the one thing that I do remember from my Sunday school is that to be a good Jew, you first have to be a good human being, which I think for most people includes not killing other human beings. I know that sounds kind of some simplistic, but it is. Um, and I just wanted to address your point about, um, again, about living separately. Well, maybe all the Arabs and Palestinians can go live in Jordan. Maybe it would be better if the Jews lived on one side of the world and the Arabs lived on the other. But that's not the way it is. And to tell someone to le leave their home and to go somewhere else and then it'll be okay, it's a hard thing, you know? Maybe it would be better if my mom and I lived on different sides of the world too, but that's not the way it is. So you deal with what you have in front of you. Um, so I guess I just feel that that the only choice, the only non-destructive choice for both Israel and for Palestine or for Israeli Jews and for Palestinians is to negotiate with whether it's over coffee or over cake. Compassion and, and mercy for all the Jews killed in, in, in 1920. What should we have sat down in 1920 when there wasn't even a Jewish state? Over coffee and cake, over what issue? I'm talking I, a rhetorical question. In 1929, in one day in Hebron, which they don't call Hebron, they call Al Khalil. In one day in 1929, they murdered 67 Jewish men, women, and children. What was bothering them in 1929? Clearly, the occupied lands of 1967, right? Of course, certainly. Between 1936 and 1938, there was an intifada. 510 Jews died, murdered. What should we have talked about then when there wasn't even a Jewish state? Where have you been? In 1948, we wanted to sit down with them, and we accepted an insane compromise. And they said no and went to war. Sit down with them and compromise. How easy it is for you to live here or in Great Neck, or in Greater Neck, or in Greatest Neck, wherever you happen to live, and tell me, let's try to compromise again. Again, I've had it. I've had it. The compromise is that we will be prepared to allow them to live in Jordan, which is really ours. That's a big, big compromise on my, on my part. And hopefully we'll live in peace. Your next point was, 